Welcome to Mike Brown Barbecue. Today we're going to make Texas style brisket burn ins on this 250 gallon offset smoker. Stay tuned. Alright, folks, what we got here is a beef brisket point from HEB. I'm not sure what grade it is, but it's got exceptional marbling in it. Today we're going to be making Texas style burn ins, brisket burn ins. So this is pretty much just the brisket point trimmed off of the brisket. It's going to require very little trimming. Uh, you'd go about this just like you were smoking a whole packer brisket. So the shape is not too bad, but we are thin right here. So as much as I'd hate to do it, I need to take this off right here. Take that off. That'll be a little pit master snack. We'll round this off and get us a decent little shape out of this. Kind of looks more like a tri tip than a brisket. We're not going to do a whole, whole lot to it. All right. So I like that way that looks now. Looking at the fat cap that's on here, you can see that's kind of thick. So we're going to take some of that fat cap off right there. And I can see I have some fat overhang right there. So I'll take that off. Give it a little scrape. That'll kind of even out any uneven little gouges you make. So I'm happy with the fat cap on that. That's about the kind of fat cap I'm looking for on briskets when I smoke them. They're going to be no different than on this brisket point. That fat cap insulates the top of the meat and helps protect it. Let's take a minute. And admire the marbling in that. It's going to be some good eating. I'm not a real big proponent of taking a brisket point and separating it off a full packer to do this, but I was walking through HEB yesterday looking for stuff to cook for you guys, brainstorming ideas as I was going, and I seen this little beautiful brisket point right here, and I could not pass it up. So, so you know what? It's been a while since I've done burn-ins for myself. And I've never shot a burn-in video on the channel. So what the hell? Let's do some burn-ins. This will be more of a Texas-style burn-in versus a uh, 
Kansas City burn in because I don't like a real, a real sweet stuff on my beef. There will be some sweet on it, but it's going to be very minimal. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get her seasoned up with some 16 mesh black pepper. And we'll give that a pat in. Then we're going to hit it with a light layer season all salt. Give that a little pat in. And then something I've been wanting to try that I happened to stumble upon yesterday in HEB was Fiesta. Uncle Chris's gourmet, extra fancy Texas style seasoning barbecue seasoning so we're feeling extra fancy today and I figure we'll get fancy we'll put it on these burn ends so we're going to hit it with some of that also and see what it adds to the table see if it's something I'm going to use again or uh this will be the only time I use it but uh I know for a fact this will be good on pork just by tasting that in the bottle it should be good on beef also so we'll go ahead and get this flipped around and vice versa. Do the same thing on our top side, our presentation side. We're smoking this fat cap up. Heavy amount of pepper. One little light layer of seasonal salt. Give that a pat in because this is salty and so is this Uncle Chris's extra fancy Texas barbecue rub so you don't want to over salt hit it with that pat it in and then I'm just going to hit the sides with the Uncle Chris's It's probably a little bit more seasoning than I typically put on my beef, but like I said, I'm going for burn ends here, so you want to elevate the beef. Hopefully this extra fancy Uncle Chris's barbecue rub elevates the beef. So we're going to let that sweat in for a little while while we're waiting on this. Let's go get us a fire started. Stay tuned. All right, folks, the time has come to throw our brisket point on for the burn ends. All the seasons soaked in real nice. Everything is looking good. I'm going to put it right here in the middle where the thickest part of that point is taking the brunt of the fire. I'm going to uh, cold smoke this. It's something I've been working with the last couple of smokes. What I mean by cold smoke, I mean we're going to smoke this for 200 and under for about two to three hours. Let it get real good color, real good smoke flavor, and then we'll crank our heat up and finish it out. I've noticed that's something some of the top 50 barbecue joints have been doing here lately that I picked up on, so I went out of my way and tried it. And another thing that I've noticed along the way, the bigger the pit, the bigger the smoke flavor. But this cold smoking can make up for the smoke flavor you get versus a 250-gallon to a 1,000-gallon if you do what I'm going to show you next. Stay tuned. What you'll notice in this video is I skipped a part where I do the cold bed. Reason being, I've recently adopted a new method because I'm getting lazier, trying to cut down on my prep time and uh, being out in this heat in Southeast Texas. So what I've been doing, it works perfect for me, is dumping a whole bag of BNB lump charcoal in my fire box. This is the 10 pound bag, lighting it with a torch and letting it burn down till it's ash over, and I get the same results as burning five, six, seven pieces of logs for a coal bed. If you've got a bigger firebox or a smaller firebox, use more or less. So that being said, let's start out with our flavor woods. What I'm gonna go on with first is a dense piece of red oak. And what I mean by dense is it's heavy. If I had a moisture meter on me right now, I would guarantee you this would be anywhere between 25 and 30% moisture. This is going to put out the kind of flavor on this cold smoke that I want on my meat. So we're going to put this dude 
right back there in the back, on the very back side of the coal bed. Then I'm gonna go on next with a dense piece of live oak. I've been cooking a lot with live oak here lately. I like the flavor of it. Uh, I'm gonna keep using it. I don't like it so much using it by itself because it's dense and it's strong. When you mix it with the red oak, it puts out a very good flavor. Highly recommended. We're gonna put this one right here at the front. And, I, and the reason I gotta kinda slant it a little bit because of how long it is. So with this setup right here, with the logs laid directly on the coal bed right there, produces a slower burn, not as much airflow through there. So you get more of that cold smoke flavor from the slower burn of the log pulling up on your meat. This setup right here will last me about two and a half, three hours like this, burning anywhere from 200 to 150. I'm not in no rush on this meat. I'm in my backyard. I have all the time in the world. If I didn't have time, I'd go ahead and do my regular setup and rock and roll with, with 275. But we're gonna bring the meat up slowly, let it get good color, good smoke flavor, and let this wood burn real slow. I'm gonna go ahead and close my firebox door down. It's about two inches open. That's why I like to leave this. You gotta give it a lot more airflow when you put them logs on there like that or your cold bed will peter out. So we've got that on. I'll bring you guys in for updates and we'll check on our meat here in about two hours, two and a half hours. When we get ready to manage this fire, we'll check on it and I'll show you what I'm looking for when I do this process right here. Stay tuned. All right, folks, I wanted to bring you in for a fire update. We're almost three hours in. My tip's gone from 200 to 225 and that's because those green logs or moisture logs have been sitting there. They've dried out. They've started to catch fire. And I'll show y'all what that's looking like. Same on this gauge right here. And as you can see, that's what our fire is looking at as of right now. Those two cold smoke logs I put on there. One's about burnt away. The other one's burning. So let's go take a look and see what our meat looks like and then we'll come back here and manage this fire and start rolling with it all right folks so here's our brisket point right here bark's not quite set which is not to be expected but look at that real deep red color we're getting there that's from the cold smoke process this is the perfect flavor smoke for your meats right here so we need to manage that fire now start ramping up our temps to 275 uh, we'll go ahead and get this closed down and I'll explain what I'm going to do next. Stay tuned. Alright folks, let's manage this fire. You can see my cold smoke log. This one's about to burn up. So we'll smash it down. It'll be a part of the cold bed. This little piece is still burning right here. I'll put him right here in the middle. And the same for this one right here. Still got some life left to it. So we'll put it in the middle also. When I get a bunch of fine ash like that, I just dump it out, put it on the ground right here so they don't have no coals left in it. All right, we're gonna go on with next a piece of live oak dense. Put that one right there. Follow that up. Put a little old piece of red oak right here. And the reason my live oak's a little bit longer than my red oak is with the live oak and cut it and really didn't just die about it. And vice versa we'll go back to live oak once more. Put it right there. Put our red oak right here and we're gonna leave everything spaced far apart and let it do its thing and come up slowly we've been running 225 200 and now i want to run about 265 285 somewhere in there so we're going to close this down to about an inch open and let it do its thing stay tuned all right folks fire's burnt down we're at the five and a half hour mark come in here and check out our little baby brisket point and see how it's doing and it is looking nice got good dark bark 
starting to lose some moisture retention. The bark is set. The fat's not yet rendered on top though. It's still got a little ways to go. It is getting a little soft on the edges, which is a good thing, which means it's cooking. I figure it's probably got about three more hours left. Uh, what we'll do with it next, let's put some beef tallow down once we get to this next part of the cook. And I'm going to wrap it up in full real tight, finish it off, and then we'll take it off the pit and slice it up into little cubes and put it back in that fold and add some barbecue sauce to it and let it go for another hour. And then we'll have us some delicious Texas-style burn ends. So let's go manage this fire. Stay tuned. All right, folks, the time has come to manage this fire for the third time in the cook. And let's see what we got. Like everything is burnt pretty much down except for this one piece of live oak right here. And it's burnt down enough to pass in the coals. But now what we got now is a very established coal bed. Get these loose ashes out right here at the front. I'm going to spread these coals out on my new coal bed, kind of flatten it out. Just like so. And we're going to go on with our new logs. We're going to come in here with a piece of live oak. I'm going to keep that live oak going. We're going to put them right there, followed by another piece of red oak. I'm going to put it right over there, leave a considerable gap. Another piece of red oak. Put him back there. And then one more piece of live oak. Right here in the front. Leave everything spaced apart. And it'll all burn low and slow. We'll go ahead and get this closed down. Is this taking off? And we'll hope to get another two and a half, two hours out of this setup. Stay tuned. All right, folks, we're roughly seven hours in on this brisket point. Let's go ahead and check it out. Fat up top is rendered. It's getting soft on the sides. For the purpose of viewership, I'll check it with my thermal pen. We're showing 175 in the thickest part. So we're anywhere from 175 to 185 throughout. It's not exactly the evenest cut. So what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and finish it out. Wrap it up in some tin foil. Put it on that tin foil like that and bake pour some tallow over it. Generous amount. We'll wrap it up nice and tight right here on the pit. And let it finish doing its thing. Probably in about an hour, it'll be done. So we need to go manage that fire again. Stay tuned. All right, folks, it's time to see what our fire is looking like. It's been two hours. We got out of this burn time right here. We're officially seven hours in on the cook. And we are spent. But let's make this our new coal bed. There's still a little bit of life left in this log here. So we're gonna bury him down right in the middle. What I like to do with my logs that hadn't quite burned up. Even out your little coal bed. The excess ash out of the way. Don't get it on your foot. And we'll go on with the next set. So now that everything's wrapped up, my sole purpose is just to worry about maintaining heat. I can burn as dirty as a fire I want to right now. But on thick logs, it's just red oak. I'll put one right there and one right there and I'll put even big thicker D 
fence logs up on top. Same thing. And what I'll do is I'll use my firebox door to adjust it. And I, like I said, I can restrict airflow however I want. It'll keep me at about 300 degrees since I'm wrapping. I can crank my heat up to 300 when I wrap. We'll check back on everything here in about an hour, hour and a half, and see where we're at. Stay tuned. All right, folks, I got a feeling that our point is just about done for the burn ends. So we're going to check it out. What I like to do is take it, unwrap it. Oh, yeah, that's tender. I can tell. Oh, yeah, that's done. We're probing at 200. I don't really get off so much on temp. I just want to know that it probes tender. All right, so the next step of this, take it off a pit. I'll leave it open like this for about 45 minutes and let it cool off, and then we'll cut it up in chunks. Stay tuned. All right, folks, so it's been about 30 minutes. I actually had to change full. I ripped this on the grating when I was getting it out. But uh, nonetheless, we're still good. And that is a nice, tender piece of meat right there. I'm going to save this full. We're going to use it. We'll give you all a little close up here. It's real jiggly. It's what you want. And if you're confused about the grain, just flip it over on the back side. You can see the grain's running that way. So we'll start right here and we'll cube it up from this little end right here. And typically I want to go about one inch cubes for this. It's cutting like butter. Oh yeah, and it feels good. And you can see nice smoke ring. A lot of the fat's rendered. Nice and yellow pillowy fat. Still a little bit tight, but we didn't give it no overnight rest. So what we're gonna do now we're going to cube it up. Cube it up. And put it back in this full. And I just can't help myself. I'm going to go ahead and just try this little piece the way that it is. That looks very, very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very good, but it's not as good if I would have rested this overnight. But... I'm double cooking it already. So I really wasn't too worried about that. Still very good. Alright, so we're going to go in now. Some barbecue sauce. My homemade barbecue sauce. I've got uh, the directions on how to make this in my last video. So I want to go check it out. And to get a little bit more sweet, we'll add some honey. It's good there. Pretty much what I'm going to do with it now. Leave it open top. Like this. And throw it back on the smoker for about an hour. And let it caramelize up. And next time you see this, when we cut it and eat it, stay tuned. Alright folks, I got a feeling that these burn ends should be about done. So let's check them out. Yeah, they're a little caramelized. Looking like a little burn in should. Nice and squishy. So we're going to pull these off right here. And tin them up. And let them rest. For about an hour. And then we'll try one out. Stay tuned. Alright folks. Alright folks, the time has come. Let's try out these, uh, brisket burn ends we made so let's check them out look at that isn't that pretty nice red mahogany color tender real soft great bark about everything you can ask for 
gonna burn in. Let's go ahead, let's give it a try. Mm. Let's melt your mouth tender. Mm. That's very good. It's a tad bit on the salty side. I did mix that seasonal salt with that Uncle Chris's gourmet bar barbecue rub. So I think that's why it's a little bit salty. But it works with the sweet. You can get the real smoky, savory, with the sweet from the honey and the barbecue sauce. All in all, very good. Melts in your mouth tender. It's just, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of sweet beef. I just never have been. But a lot of people would probably eat this and like it. So, it's a Texas style brisket burn in. What can I say? I think it would have benefited if I would have took that point and actually rested it overnight and then sliced it. Probably would have made it a little bit more tender and some of that intermuscular fat would have gelled out but all in all still a success not a bad cook so i'll bring you back through a little recap on this right quick started out with a brisket point i think it was choice grade weighed roughly four three or four pounds something like that i think it was three uh, we cold smoked it for the first three hours set that smoke flavor in and we cranked up to 275 and smoked it for another five hours and we wrapped it up in tin foil, finished it out an hour and a half, took it off, cubed it up, sauced it up, jazzed it up, put it back on the pit for another hour and a half, and pulled it off, and here we are now. So I highly encourage you guys to go and do this if you want to do this. Uh, if not, in my opinion, you really ain't uh, missing nothing special. Like I said, don't get me wrong, it's good. It tastes damn good, but... It's not big sweet on beef, sweet on pork all day, but not on beef. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll have some more content out for you guys soon. Peace.